AEW Dynamite. Did you watch AEW Dynamite last night? I did. Look at that. I beat Brian at something. <laughs> now, what did you think about Nick Wayne against Swerve Strickland? Being someone who's got kind of a toe in in the the life of Nick Wayne, and that you you know you know me that, that knows Brian that obviously was was trained by Buddy Wayne and was very influential to to many people on the site, including Vincent Verhey and Craig Proper and all that. What did you think about Nick Wayne's big debut on AEW last night? Now, to be fair, uh, yes, I know a fair bit about Nick Wayne. Brian's told stories on here. I saw the video that went viral of Darby giving him the contract at, I think it was Defy, well, yep. like a year ago or whatever it was. Uh, but I've never actually seen him wrestle. Uh, just just like the, the ending of the match leading up to Darby handing him the contract. So I didn't know exactly what to expect. And I got to say, I was I was pleased. It, it was entertaining. Um... He looked, I don't know how tall he is. I know Swerve's not the tallest guy, but he looked hella tall. Very tall. Athlete. Okay. He's I'm like, he looked super tall. I don't know if he actually is because a lot like actors with some of these wrestlers, they are all similar in height, so they look taller than they actually are. But uh, I thought he was great. He had a couple moments where I'm like, oh, God, don't fall. I think of there was one moment he tried to uh, kind of hop over the – turnbuckle and land on the uh the apron and definitely caught his foot so there were a couple of moments of uh, uh, okay 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 but i i know that's first match nerves and how many 18 year olds are getting a couple of weeks of vignettes leading up to a debut so i think Seriously. all things considered he performed well he handled at least i believe he handled the pressure and the expectations well again it also was really good having him in there with swerve somebody who he's been in the ring with i, I would imagine tons of times and i i'm sure they have a battle plan for this whole thing already laid out you know well in advance i mean that's one thing that you know tony khan is always noted for anyways he's got a plan for this and i know a lot of people were probably uh, some people i know were upset some people i know were really surprised that you know he did not get the win over swerve especially since swerve has been on a losing streak but this is swerve still got things going on with darby allen obviously darby allen is going to be playing into that swerve attacked him during his match Darby goes out there and nicks his, you know, nicks his guy, his friend. You know, he's the one who's kind of kind of overseeing him here. And, you know, we'll have to see what happens. They did show Nick's mom a lot during the, the match. I don't say a lot, but they showed her, you know, two, three times during it. They made sure that Swerve was in her face at the end of the match. I have a feeling. And I tell you what, Prince Nana, he was in, been in the business a long time. I'm sure he's been hit hard by somebody. I've heard rumors here you don't want to get hit by Mama Wayne. So I have a feeling that we'll see what happens here. We'll see what the, how the, the whole plan plays out. But, uh, you know, again, this could be incredibly entertaining. I saw Nick Wayne at, at GCW shows, and that's the first time that I had ever seen him live work. And I had seen clips of him working out with Brian way back. Uh, Brian was making one of the comebacks. I can't remember what it was. And he sent me a video, and I could not believe it. And it's like, how old is that kid? And he was, I don't know what the time, 14 or whatever it was. And it was like 13 maybe. And it's like, this kid is one, you're short. And this kid is tall, and he was moving. I mean, you saw it last night during the video package that they had where he's such a – he's like six years old, and, and he's doing Rana's on Buddy and Lake Scissors on Buddy. And it was just – it was it was crazy to see him. And as soon as Avery saw him, he wanted to be a wrestler. Not that he didn't want to, you know, maybe want to be a wrestler before, but he saw Nick Wayne, saw somebody two years older than him, you know, looks like him a little bit and was like, I want to do that. I, I like this guy. This is my dude. And that's what Nick Wayne's going to have going for him. It's what Billy Starks is going to have going for her. You know, when they expose her more on the AEW roster, I think she's on the ROH side right now. But at some point, she's going to be there. Two 18-year-old kids with just five tools, you know, as far as being prospects. They are blue-chip prospects here. And we're going to get to see their evolution happen on national TV. And I would never suggest to anyone that you get your kid in the wrestling business under the age of 18. In fact, 
in some places there should probably be laws and rules around that. And I know that there were people that when Nick and Billy started to make more of a name on the independent scene, people kind of turned their nose up at it. And I get it. I do get it. But because there's a lot of predators in the wrestling business, there's a lot of garbage in the wrestling business, especially on the independent level. There's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of bad influence. There's a lot of nonsense. You don't want your kid exposed to that. You don't want to send your kid off for training. That type of mentality, I, I, I don't get. But but these are two people that, again, and the only thing, I, I don't know the Lucha scene, but I know, look, kids start 13, 14, 15. It'll be minis. You know, Rey Mysterio started as a mini. And then, you know, as he started to grow, you know, that's when he took on the Rey Mysterio Jr. name, you know, from his uncle, Rey Mysterio Sr. and all that. And that's the only thing I can I can try to equate, you know, Starks and, and Wayne to. Yes, Nick's father has passed away. But let me tell you something. You don't want to cross Mama Wayne. And on top of that, there's just a lot of people that really care about that kid because Buddy was such a good guy, because Buddy did influence so many of those guys. You think Craig Proper is going to let anything happen to Buddy Wayne? Hell no. You think Darby Allen or Swerve Strickland or about a zillion people? You know, no, absolutely not. And they were very well protected. Same thing with Billy Starks and her, her father uh, being a, a photographer or stepfather being a, a photographer. He would be there at all the shows. We met her mother. Mother, you know, wonderful lady, and those two kids are the exception to the rule. And there's somebody I think that AEW is really going to be able to get some, make some really great hay out of because there are kids like my kid who see them. And again, wrestling, you want to identify with somebody. That was one of the whole points of bringing in more diversity into the writers' rooms. It's one of the reasons that you want more diversity. You do want somebody that you can identify with and go, that's my dude, you know, or that's my person. That's the person I want to root for, you know? And again, they have that with Nick Wayne, and they, and I think they're going to have that with Billy Starks. And I tell you, a lot of pressure on Nick right now, you know, obviously being on national TV your whole career. There's not many examples of this, you know, and Katsuhiko Nakajima was one case in Noah recently, but there's not, there's not a lot of this. Tommy Rich is a good example of it, though, when WTBS started in 1976 and went up on the, on the satellite, one of the big things that they did, which unfortunately did not make it to tape, was... Abdullah the Butcher killing Tommy Rich, you know, killed him. But then it was the fight that he showed. It was the expressions he showed on his face, which Nick showed. And they went through a series, and then finally he beat Abdullah the Butcher. And then that really sealed the deal with him being the most over guy, not only in the state of Georgia, but anybody that had a TV that was watching WTBS. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.